Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number three of the Tree Talks With podcast. Today's guest is a guy that I met off of Instagram who is actually a big fan of the YouTube channel, which I was very, very surprised about because he is a pretty promising personal trainer in the Jacksonville area. His name is Chance James from Your Chance Fitness. We go over everything from how he helps people go through their fitness journeys and his own fitness journey as well. And of course, we fit in some Jacksonville Jaguar talk in there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, episode number three's guest, Chance. Just trying to get that eighth batch, eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach, Maybach speed racer on that racetrack, racetrack. I'm just trying to get that eighth batch, eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach, Maybach speed racer on that racetrack, All right, racetrack. And I'm super, super excited to have Chance on the channel, and females, if you're ready, don't be drowning because he's in here. Chance, how you doing, brother? What's going on, man? It's Chance from Your Chance Fitness. I'm glad to be here. I've been watching you for a while on YouTube, man. It's so glad to finally meet you, man. Yeah, what uh, what what made you find Troop Talks on YouTube? I guess just for selfish reasons, because I'm curious. Well, I'm a big Jaguars fan. I got a tattoo on me. I'm from Jacksonville, and we don't get talked about enough in the news at all. You know that. Yeah. So we don't get talked about literally at all and i saw um a garden Minshew video uh, uh interview like from yesterday and they talked about him more his mustache than anything <laughs> yeah had. on god all. dude i'm just like bro so in the off season i'm like bored as hell so i try to find like stuff about jaguars and then i found you and i found other guy i'm pretty sure you know the ucf guy yeah ucf yeah yeah so i, I found you and i liked you and he's pretty cool too. So, um, you guys are the two main sources of Jaguar stuff. So I like to lock in on y'all, man. I mean, it's been it's been a fun journey with the Jaguars. Honestly, talking about the Jaguars, you know, being from Idaho, I had the same problems as you, like not finding anything in the news, and especially being from all the way here, you know, mm -hmm. I never had never heard anything talked about with the Jaguars. So I wanted to provide that platform. And I think, yeah. you know, me and me and UCF kind of hold that down. What what drew you to the Jacksonville Jaguars just from being in the area or what else is there? Yeah, man. So I was born in ninety three and then the Jags were created in ninety five. So and I'm from Jacksonville. So it's like I love football. So literally since I was two, it's been Jaguars since then. So I know they've been trash for a while, but we get a lot of hope, man. I like all this young talent we got. It's just like, man, if we can just put it together, we'll be straight. Like a lot of people don't understand how good we can be, and shoot, next year they don't understand it. If we get Jerry Judy, bro. Oh my God, bro, dude, that's my main hope, bro. I don't, I don't know. I I wouldn't take him. I don't know. Would you take him at nine though? Yes. You would take yes. him at, if like they I said. They say he's the best. Oh, uh, I've seen a prospect since Julio Jones, bro. Yes. Dude, over I'll Isaiah Simmons? One, bro. Huh? Over Isaiah Simmons, you take, Judy? Yeah, 100%. Really? We got, bro, we, yeah, bro, we got, we got linebackers, bro. Quincy Williams is developing. Leon Jacobs has in, developed pretty well. Like, And then Donald Payne is pretty good, too. So it's like, it's not a huge need. Well, I feel like. I, if I want to go defense in um in the first round, I would get Ken Law on in, at twenty. I so, get Ken Law um, at twenty and sell Marshall Darks or somewhere else. Yes, sir. So, um, what do you think about the Jaguars keeping Todd Wash on that side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball? I don't know, man. Like because that that two I'm blinded by a 2017 season, bro. Nah, like, I, yeah. I don't know. Like, he he can do it. Clearly, he could do it with the pieces. And you can't really blame a coach if he doesn't have the pieces. Like, yeah, I feel like it was a horrible, a horrible thing that we got rid of Sean Gibson. Cause I feel like Sean Gibson and Ronnie Harrison would have been crazy together. 100%. And then Jalen Ramsey, his antics, like, I love Jalen Ramsey to death, but Trey Herndon had better stats than him. I know you posted Trey Herndon on, on your story this year. I mean, this year, today. 
Um, yeah. What, what drew, what's drawing you so close to Trey Herndon? Because I feel like this isn't the first time you've posted him on your story before. I feel like you're a Trey Herndon guy. I'm not sure if I posted him before, but, like, I was on his page and I commented. He liked oh. something. So I was like, I'm going to post him. It's just because he's an underdog. Like, I, when he got in the game, I'm like, man, this dude's about to be scrub. And he, he kind of was at first. He, Denver game, it was hard to watch him play. But he just got – he developed pretty fast. And he was a baller. He's a baller, bro. Like, and I always thought, like, man, we got Jalen Ramsey. We got A.J. Boye. Imagine what we have behind, just sitting behind him. We might have some gems behind them we don't even know. It's kind of like Garoppolo and Tom Brady. Like, who knew Garoppolo was going to be a baller like that? So, yeah, I like Trey Hanna was like a, a a pure underdog story, and I appreciate that, man. You know what's funny is that when the Jags released Jalen Ramsey, so many people were quick to talk shit about the guy or trade him, not release him, obviously. And yeah. and uh, so many people were talking shit about the guy, burning jerseys. But yeah. there's a chance the Rams might not even bring him back. If you saw the Jags make a play to get Jalen Ramsey back, would you approve of that move? Yeah, like he's all <laughs> for, he's all the thing corner. Like I have two of his jerseys, bro. Like I got Leonard Fournette, I got his, and I got a custom Kaepernick jersey with uh Jaguar jersey. But <laughs> Ramsey, yeah, bro, he's undeniably a beast. AJ, he 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 made AJ Boyd play better. He he just made everybody play better around him with that intensity. So yeah, he he'll, he'll be okay. Yeah, well, I'll bring him back. <laughs> I think the the thing was that Jalen was so good in Jacksonville because of you know what we talked about earlier. There's not a lot of news you know covering the Jaguars. He was in a small market, and you know mm-hmm. he was a player the team could really cling on to. But when he went to L.A. and, you know, the Rams are obviously in Los Angeles, they're going to get that major coverage. And mm-hmm. I think – I just – I don't think Jalen could handle, like, the heat of having, like, certain bad plays. And, you know, he'd go on Twitter trying to defend yeah. himself. So I think him in a small small market's where he belongs. Yeah. He probably, he, he's a little sensitive. You can <laughs> – you can definitely tell. He's a little sensitive. So you, when you got Aaron Donald, Dante Fowler, all those guys on your team – they're going to look at you. There's going to be a lot more news going on. So, if you can't take the Jaguars talking about you, then you damn sure can't take L.A. talking about you. Right? That, that's facts. So, now we're going to transition to one more Jaguar defensive player while we start – while we're still talking about the Jags. Let's talk about Yannick Ngakwe. Does Yannick okay. Ngakwe's cryptic tweets, cryptic Instagram posts bug you as much as the average Jags fan? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate it. Just based off of Ramsey and what he did, is like I don't, I don't appreciate it. I appreciate him during the season, how he did it, did it during the season and kept it professional. But I feel like if you don't want to be in a certain place, then that's fine. With, that's, I mean, it, it's freedom of speech, so I guess he can do what he wants to do. But he has to understand that he knows that we're going to spaz about it. Um. And I know that he like wants like a hundred million dollar deals. Like, bro, you're good, but bro, in the cap space we got, nah, bro, can't so, do it. And it's like Smoot got six sacks and played probably fifty snaps. We'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. I got eight and alive on Twitter because I said Dewan Smoot was improving this year, and everybody was assuming that I was saying that he was better than Yannick and Gawkwe. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that in any way, but I think Smoot was a player that really came into his own this year. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Like, he – like, it's crazy because I think I commented on Smoot stuff and I was like, you're going to get five sacks this year. And he was like, that would be a – that would be a like a career year for me. That would be perfect. And he got six. I'm like, bro, that's crazy. So, I wish I could find that. So, I forgot where I put it. But, yeah, he – six, bro, six sacks and you don't even start, like, I, I'm a, I'm gonna take my chances. I'm, before I pay somebody hundred million dollars, I'm not gonna do it. The Jags seem to always have those like depth guys on the defensive line. Cause I mean, yeah. Josh Allen could even be considered that. Obviously, yeah. getting ten and a half sacks coming off the edge. He's a guy that I think the Jags aren't gonna. They can't play these games that they're playing with Yannick and Gawkwe with Josh Allen. Josh Allen's a guy that they need to lock down long term. Yeah. Uh, 100%. If the deal is less than a hundred million, would you like to see Yannick and Gawkway back? 
next year. I, I would love to see Young and Gakwe back. Um, it's just the fact that we can use money elsewhere. Like we can, well, we don't have to pay for Jerry Judy, so that's fine. We can get Jerry Judy, but as far as O lineman, I'm kind of Cam Robinson. I like Cam Robinson. And I gotta understand he's he was coming off an injury, and a lot of people forget that. So he did decent for that. I want to. I want to. I want to get rid of Noel. We gotta get rid of Noel and get somebody. Shoot, somebody second round draft. Like, so I think we don't have to do too much free agency stuff. So I don't know, man. Well, Andrew Norwell was the guy that the Jaguars did like a at least the fans like did like a full 360 on. I remember the day that they signed him. That year was when I first started doing like troop talks, and like mm-hmm. I was hyped to get Andrew Norwell, and a lot of fans yeah. were hyped to get him as well. And in complete Jaguar fashion, he comes in <laughs> and is not what we expect. Bro, I thought he was gonna be a dog. Bro. I did too, hundred percent. You get a nasty freaking white guy with long hair in the trenches dude you just expect <laughs> it you just expect him to be a dog yeah yeah man but because he coming from a big market he was protecting cam newton it's like oh yeah he was he's a dog like you're part of me was wondering like why the or are they letting him go and that that's a lot that's a lot of like we didn't we didn't answer ask that question like why are they letting them go and I figured out why they <laughs> go. <laughs> man, it's like, yeah. I wish you, man. I like Brandon Linder. I he, love Brandon Linder. I like Brandon Linder. Um, AJ Cam is cool. You like for, AJ? For I think AJ Cam's the biggest problem on the offensive line. I think for we need to price. replace him. Oh, you know, for the price. I, I have no problem replacing him, but for the price? That's true. Yeah. And he's playing like Norwell right now, but Norwell's getting hundred hundred million dollars. That's, that's so true. I like it every time. Like, yeah. Yeah. So well, and another offensive lineman that, you know, we haven't talked about, Jawan Taylor, man. That's a guy who played, I think, the most snaps out of any rookie this year. And I think he played the most snaps out of any Jaguar player this year. And mm-hmm. um if I'm correct, you you're a UCF guy. That's your favorite that's your favorite college team, right? Or am I am I tripping? Am I tripping? Am I tri- I'm trip tripping. Hard, man. I'm tripping. Hard, okay, I know it's a Florida school, isn't it? No, nah, that's a Florida school. That's, a, that's Orlando, but nah, man, I'm I'm an LSU guy. Um, oh, are you really? My, I thought you were yeah, a Florida. Yeah, my family's from yeah. Louisiana. Oh, okay, okay, my yeah. bad, my bad. Yeah, I don't know why I thought we, that. <laughs> big guy, we we the big dogs. Yeah, we yeah, <laughs> LSU man. But, you know, seeing Juwan Taylor play in Florida, I thought that he was going to be a good player. And, you know, a lot of people mm-hmm. had, like, disagreements with that. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, he showed out this year. I think he's he's a guy that could move make the move to left tackle next season. Uh, what were your thoughts mm-hmm. on Taylor this year? Woo. Like, it's crazy because I um, got on live with him, like, two weeks ago. I got on really? live with him. I talked about it. Yeah, we chopped it up a little bit. Um, he – he was really he he did really well against um uh, TJ Watt no JJ Watt um yeah. that's what we talked about we talked about JJ Watt he was like that's his first time I think that's his first game or whatever well, no that was his first game but we first time going up against a big guy like that and he he I don't think JJ Watt got a sack no, that's crazy that was, yeah so I know I play I play corner and safety so I don't know like the differences between like like switching how different it is. So I know it could be difficult, but if you're up for the challenge, I'm with you. Shoot, I'm okay with Cam Robinson going over there. Like, I'm fine yeah. with that. that. That'll that be perfect for me. Yeah, because at least Leonard Fournette can chip him off and then, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm good with that. Well, I think this offensive line combined with, like, Leonard Fournette and how much he improved in, like, pass blocking this year, which is just, you know, a lot of people are talking about it, but it can't be understated that, like, that was such an important part of his game this year. You know, when when, when they – when, like, guys like Cam Robinson, Juwan Taylor would get beat, Leonard was able to chip him. So, you know, Minshew yeah. had that opportunity to throw the ball. Uh, speaking of Gardner Minshew, um, what, was, what was your experience this year seeing that guy play? Did you know anything about him prior to – when he stepped nah. into the NFL? Nah, man, I know that's your boy, though, man. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. Nah. 
bro, like I when he got in the so I was at Buffalo Wild Wings for the first game, and they wasn't playing the Jaguars. They wasn't playing the Jaguars on any of the TVs. So I'm watching it on my phone. I think somebody does a live stream on my phone. So I was watching it, and Nick Foles got hurt. And so another Jags fan, I'm telling him, like, man, Nick Foles got hurt. He just threw, like, an 80-yard ball touchdown. And he just got hurt. He's like, what? They're spazzing, right? So, but then Gardner came in. I'm not expecting nothing. I'm just like, whatever, at this point. Dude was balling. Like, we, like Jaguar fans, we never see the offense really just excel, like just march down the field with no problem. And he was just doing it every time. I'm, I was sitting listening like, like, <laughs> like what? Like, DJ Chargers? We ain't used to what? this. Like, <laughs> I'm not used to that at all. So when that happened, and then DJ Chargers just started balling, I thought D.D. Westbrook was going to be our guy. Mm, a lot of people did. Chart just started falling. I'm like, yeah, this this dude like completion rate was 88. percent I'm like, bro, this is the guy, bro. You don't do that. Like, I don't care how what type of luck you got, you, it doesn't happen. NFL 88. percent It doesn't happen, bro. Like you literally like what made three probably three questionable throws, if that. You know what I'm saying? Nah. And it's against a team that was in the Super Bowl. And I mean, like if. If the defense and, – and the Chiefs' offense is nothing to scoff at. But, you know, if the defense was able to, you know, prevent some scoring drives, there's mm-hmm. every opportunity if Gardner was playing the way he was that the Jags yeah. could have won that game. I feel like, yeah, I feel like they, they just got off to a fast, fast pace. Like they – like Sammy Watkins, they threw it over the middle. I think our safety missed a, a tackle or two, and then he was just gone. And after that, it was just like, bro. And then Nick Foles got hurt, so it's like – I think everybody was just like, damn. Yeah, but then you know you see the rise of Gardner Minshew, and like you said, that's my boy, and I and I'll, I'll take full credit for for Gardner Minshew, you know, like saying that he was gonna be a good quarterback. Because if, yeah. if you you watched any of my mock drafts, like I had last year, I put out like twelve of them, and then like <laughs> eight out of the twelve, I had the Jags getting Minshew in the sixth round because I was like, dude, that's crazy. I swear, I was like, I swear, 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 and then I woke up, like literally. As the Jags were picking their sixth round pick, I get the notification on my phone. It's Gardner Minshew. I freak out, dude. <laughs> like That's I'm talking, crazy, I'm talking. I like Gardner Minshew so much. Like I can name my firstborn child Gardner. You know what I Man, mean? Like, he, <laughs> bro, he's a baller, bro. Like he, bro. I think we're gonna get the respect. Like it's gonna be a 2017 year because in 2017 I didn't like I didn't know that we were gonna do like ball like that. Like I just had no clue. Yeah. But this year, like coming up, I feel like. If they do the right thing, if they get Jerry Judy, if they get I, – I, I feel like we can keep – just change one thing about the O-line, like probably take Noel out and get a, a new a, a dog in there. That's all we need. We got, we got the receivers. Like, I was looking at their stats yesterday, bro. Like, Conley had 700 yards and, like, six touchdowns. Shark had 1,000 yards. Didi had, like, 500 yards and, like, three touchdowns. I was like, bro, we we're underrated as hell, bro. Like, these guys are falling, bro. So, oh, that tight end spot. Yeah, that's. I was just about to ask you that. Yeah, I just thought about it. I thought about it. It just popped in my head. I'm like, that's, I'm really hoping Josh Oliver, like, does anything. Like, just does something. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> just steps on the field once, at yeah. least. Damn. Well, one guy I think that doesn't get enough re- like respect or talk about is a guy that I think Minshew meshed really well with and that was James O'Shaughnessy. Did you oh, bro. did you think anything of James, James O'Shaughnessy? O'Shaughnessy bro. I love him bro. Like I love James O'Shaughnessy dog. Like, the crazy thing is like I I'd be I probably be on the uh their Instagram more than anybody and I I comment on his too. I told him he was gonna get five touchdowns. I told Snoop he was gonna get five sacks. I told him he was gonna get five touchdowns. The first, like, three games, he got, like, two touchdowns. I'm like, yeah, this dude's going to – he's going to get five touchdowns. Easy. This, I remember he – he meant you threw it to the left. And, like, he, he tried to juke, and then it just – his knee just buckled. I knew it. I was like, he gone, man. Well, that's a guy I, I really Tennessee, think – I really hmm? think, like, uh, if Josh Oliver doesn't step on the field – because, you know – a lot of people forget we even have Josh Oliver, like for like how he just never played last yeah. year. But there are some good free agents. Uh, would you like to see the Jags kind of 
develop O'Shaughnessy, see if he can be the guy this year. You know, kind of the strategy they've been using for the last couple of years. Or would you like to see him try and spend big money on a guy like Eric Ebron and, or Austin Hooper? I like I like Ebron. I like I like the guy from the uh, Falcons too. Austin Hooper, yeah. Um, what's his name? Austin Hooper. Hooper. Yeah, yeah, him. him. Uh, I like those two, but something's telling me about Josh Oliver. That's like I keep seeing Kelsey and Kills, but I'm like, man, I think this dude can. I think this dude can do something, bro. Like he he'll be more on the Kelsey side because Kelsey doesn't really block like that. But I think Josh Oliver, because you know who Alan Lazard is. Yeah, Alan Lazard. Yeah, yeah, I was pissed when we let him go. Yeah, I, I was pissed when we let him go, and he's a low key baller. But I'm like, I don't want to just do that again with Josh Oliver. I feel like Josh Oliver can do something. So I feel like. We should just let get Josh Oliver. Probably, we could probably maybe draft a tight end in the third or something, maybe. Um, but I don't want to spend big money where we don't have to. Like, O'Shaughnessy did the job. Honestly, O'Leary and I think they had, all of them had weird names. O'Leary, Koyak, uh, all those guys was, did. Oh, what was Devoured. that guy from the Browns? What was that guy from the Browns? He played more. What was his – the, the valve or something. The like valve. That. Set the valve. There yeah. 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 He he was okay. So it's like I want I want a guy that's when you say his name, like, oh, we gotta we gotta um watch him. Like we gotta take care of him. I think oh, Josh can be that guy if he's healthy. Um so I remember he caught that pass over the middle when he first got in and he was like like two inches away from a touchdown. I'm like, yeah. He he might have some he got some good hands and he got good speed. He's got to stay healthy, just like Ronnie Harrison. Dude gets dude gets tapped on the shoulder and gets out the game. And it's like, like what you doing? Like, yeah, Ronnie Harrison has a uh, during James upside. I feel like a I think slower so too. During James, a slower during James. <clears throat> That's yeah, you know I, I I think uh, yeah I've talked about Ronnie Harrison a lot and like when I was doing those end of the year award polls on uh, Twitter. Ronnie Harrison was a guy nominated for Defensive Player of the Year. I know he wasn't the healthiest, but, dude, I yeah. – with his potential, like, I okay. really think. And, like, uh, Jared Wilson, too, was a guy that surprised me this year. I was bagging on him, like, all the offseason, mm-hmm. and I really think he kind of – he kind of came into his own. Is safety yeah. a position of need for the Jaguars, you think? If I was going to go for anybody on the defense, it would be defensive line. Like, defensive tackle. Yeah. Um, they just didn't stop the run. Like they couldn't do anything. Like Avery Jones didn't do anything. He's usually pretty decent. Didn't do anything. Taven Bryant is just a a glorified defensive end. He's he's he has a good get off. He's a big guy, like a JJ Watt type of guy. I don't I don't see him pro- like really producing up the middle. Like I just don't do. It. I don't see it. Um, he because that that's easily for him to get D- double team. Um. Yeah, I feel like we need a a big guy like Calais. Like, if yeah, I feel like Ken because Ken Law is like six six three hundred, so like a Calais type of size. If we get that big guy in there and then have Calais in the middle, Smoot and Allen on the outsides, that should be fine. Because Smoot's a bigger body than Jan by a little bit. He looks way bigger, but he's just he's not that big. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I think that'll be a good recipe for a good run defense. And then Donald Payne, Miles, and Leandra Williams would be fine. There's no glaring holes in the defense except the defensive tackle spot. To me, I, I, would, I would, you know, I think I think you're a little more high on the linebackers than I am personally. But other than that, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd agree with you personally. But yeah. there are. Um, one of the storylines that I think got overlooked this year with the Jaguars was that they brought in a ton of running backs and like Bro. none none of them played. Yeah. Like I remember we signed Thomas Rawls, signed Benny Cunningham. I thought Thomas Alfred Rawls Blue. was gonna be dope, dude. I was like, yeah. dude, Thomas Rawls is gonna do it. But then it just ended up really being Leonard and Raquel Armstead. Uh, is that yeah. a position that you'd like to see the Jags make up? Because I think Raquel yeah. did well during the second half of the season. But would you like to see the Jags maybe bring in, you know, maybe an experienced running back to be like kind of that third down back, even though, you know, they're not really ever going to come in because Leonard obviously is a four down back. 
Yeah, so like, I like I like Leonard Fournette. He's healthier now, so I appreciate that. Rocco Armstead is is he's the same type of back as him, so I get why they did that because when he got hurt last year, they really couldn't do anything as far as run. So I get that. Um, I really miss I really miss Corey Grant. I do I really too, dude. Oh like, dude, gosh. you dump it off and he just gone, bro. Gone. Fake like, punch it. specialist. And like, people people don't realize, bro, how good he is. Like the dude probably ran like a four three right now. And he's like five years into the league. He a beast, bro. So I'm pretty sure I'm guessing that ankle was a little more severe than we thought. So I guess that's why he's not on the team right now. But yeah, I'm I I want I would want like a speedier guy, like a a dude who just Probably around like a four three, probably about five ten two hundred, and can run a good four three five one four three four or something like that in like the fifth round. So you can just come in and dump it off and like you know on third and longs or something like that. Isn't and get it like ten yards? I seen your reaction too. Wasn't that weird how the Jags signed all those running backs and none of them even played? Bro, Albert Blue, a big bow, whoever that is. Um. Thomas oh, Ross, like it's like, bro, like they really thought Leonard Fournette was gonna get hurt like the first game. <laughs> like they 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 were banking on they put they threw the house at it. It's like this dude got to get hurt as soon as he touched the field. And I feel like Leonard Fournette saw that and was like, okay, we'll see how that works. And he didn't get hurt. Like I was banking, I didn't, I wasn't banking on him getting hurt, but history, I mean, history repeats itself. He gets hurt every time, so he did really well. Um, and and the reason why we need to change the offensive lines because we can't score in the end zone, dude. Like he couldn't, he couldn't get any push. Mm-hmm. I still have nightmares about that Texas game, bro. Like it shouldn't oh. have been that close as far as getting that touchdown. They should have blew that that that, that hole up, and he should have ran right. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, I would like to see them address the running back spot. Not early at all, though. Mm-hmm. Not early at all. It's not a it's not a need. Mm-hmm. That Texans game, bro, I was I was over the top irritated with that game. I remember I released a video too, like full on, like not not full on EDP ranting, but like full on, like just pissed off. Like I was like, I titled it like I'm done with the Jaguars. I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad with the offensive line. I was mad, you know, through and through. Um, I guess to kind of recap the Jaguar talk I'm curious to know uh who is your favorite Jaguar player of all time and who's your favorite Jaguar player currently on the roster I love MJD I love MJD man um I love MJD and Rasheed Mathis it's the top of because I play I mean it's a, um it, it's a toss-up I play I play corner so I respect the corner spot Rasheed Mathis was a baller but MJD, every time he touched the ball, is gone. So it's, it's a toss-up with those two. And then um, current, it was Ramsey. And then, and then it was Ngakwe. <laughs> so now it's like, I like Chark. I like Chark. I like, um, I like Hernan. It's a lot of people I like where it's like they got to really prove themselves first. So I like her and just the fact that he stepped up. And got to miss you, of course. But that's, that's, just, that's just too cliche. Like, I, I'm going to leave that for everybody else. I like – if I had to choose somebody right now that I'm rooting for for next year, it will be probably Herman. Yeah, Trey Herman. All right, everybody in the comment section, drop below uh, who your favorite Jaguar player of all time is and who your current favorite player is. Mine's obviously Gardner Minshew. Dude, that's my that's my that's my boy through and through. And I ain't like all you bandwagon fucks. Like I, I've done, I've been on that train, bro. Like I, uh, yeah. I released a video when they when they drafted him, and I literally said in the video, Nick Foles is gonna get hurt week one, and Minshew's gonna lead the Jags on a tear. Like I I I made that happen basically. And then, like, it got, like, 500, 600 views, whatever. And then literally, like, week seven of the season, it blew up to, like, 4,000. And, like, people were just commenting on it. Like, dude, this dude predicted the future. And I was like, I didn't even remember (laughs) I said that. That's crazy. I mean, bro, I didn't know, bro. Nick Foles is fragile as hell, bro. One hit, literally, the first day, the first time you get hit in the game, you go. Like, that's the first hit. That's the first time you get hit. 
So it's like, bro, we paid this dude 88 million. We let go of Sean Gibson. We let go of, I forgot who else we let go, but Barry Church. Like, bro, who? Barry Church. Oh, bro, I hated Barry Church. Bro. I like, bro, with a passion, dog. Like, he, everybody on the defensive side made Barry Church look better than he was. Like, I could see as a DB's like, perspective, like, I could see it, like, from the pickoffs in the in the uh, Pittsburgh game, 2017, when Jalen Ramsey tipped it and he got it, like okay, cool, nice heads up play. But it's like you never see him make a play himself. You don't never see him jump, jump a ball or anything like that. So it's like, bro, I, don't know, I think like, a lot of people are on the same page. Year, him, huh? Sal, I think a lot of people are on the same page with you about Barry Church for sure. Yeah, I rather uh, that year. I rather had Cyprian than him, like honestly. Oh, don't even bring that name up on my channel, bro. Don't even, dude, I, I don't think I've hated a Jaguar player more than I hated Jonathan Cyprian, dude. Because that was – when did we have him? 2012, 2013? It's around there? Yeah, something, something like that. So I was legit, like, 12 years old. I was, like, 12, like, bro. 11 years old in that time. And I legit – Go ahead. I legit – sent him a message on Twitter and I was like, I hate you. Like I didn't, I didn't go over the top, but I was like, I like wrote him. It was like, I looked at it the other day. It was so poorly misspelled that I was just like going off. I was like, I was like, I said a can of soup can play better safety than you can. Like I hated it. Man. Yeah. It's crazy that we let go like so many ballers, bro. Like you I know you remember Reggie Nelson. Man. Yeah. Reggie Nelson, of course. Bro. Yeah. Like I'm just imagining, bro. Like, because he he led the league in I think interceptions in twenty sixteen, so it's like bro, we would have had him during that time with Sean Gibson, Ramsey, and AJ. That's it. It would have been crazy. It would have been crazy out there, bro. Well, that's like um, you know, we talked about Alan Lazard a little bit. Do you think that he is a baller, or do you think he's benefiting from having Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback? Who? Alan Lazard. Oh, um, he has he has a lot of potential. He doesn't have like typical NFL speed. He has like a tight end type speed, mm -hmm. but he's a receiver, so he's like he's a little slender. Um, honestly, I feel like if you can run routes and you can catch, and you can like catch on NFL DBs, like you, it doesn't matter who's throwing to you. If they're accurate, if they're a competent NFL quarterback. Then I mean. You're pretty good. Like, I can't I, – I'm not saying he's like a one a receiver one or something. I feel like he can – like in the red zone, you, he come in in the slot and run a fade or run a – like a, a out or something like that. You can body somebody up. He's, he's definitely serviceable. How about that? He's serviceable. He's like a – he's like a – not talent-wise. I know you know my take – I don't even yeah. know his name. Never mind. But yeah, he's definitely serviceable. I, I would definitely be able to use him. Um, so, so you talked about, uh, you know, having a quarterback that's competent. And, you know, you look at Alan Lazard in the preseason, he's having Tanner Lee, Cody Kessler, and Bortles throw him the ball. So I guess, I guess you def you're definitely right. right in that aspect. Yeah. Like, All if you right, get a quarterback that can throw it and hit your hands, then. Yeah, exactly. Then you you probably throw do some something. passes, just freaking. Like, <laughs> man. You would think Bortles is doing a no-look pass, like Patrick Mahomes, where he throws it. My God, man, I just couldn't wait for him to – like, I literally held my breath every time he ran the ball. I mean, every time he, like, dropped back and was about to pass. I'm like, I'm like man, I don't know. I don't know about this one. But, yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to discuss with Chance more of his fitness journey, uh, maybe some of his football career, and uh, talk about this little business he has opened up called Your Chance Fit. You guys are listening to the Treve Talks With podcast. All right, and we're back. Also, we are looking for sponsors for the Treve Talks With podcast, preferably Dollar Shave Club, because I give an unnecessary amount of shout-outs to Dollar Shave Clubs and videos that aren't even sponsored. By Dollar Shave Club, and I said it three times. So, basically, sponsored <laughs> post right there. Anyway, I'm chilling here with my boy Chance James. We just got done talking about some Jaguar football. Now, uh, you you mentioned you were a DB and a safety when you played football. Now, do, did you go like college level, or was it kind of just like a high school thing? 
Nah, it was uh, high school. I had a um, I had hamstring and quad problems. Uh, so I ripped my hamstring sophomore year, and I ripped it again junior year and senior year, and and during track. So it's like that. When coaches hear about that, they really don't really, they want to stay away from that. So um, couldn't really get it together as far as injury wise. But um, yeah, man, when I did play, I was you know I was pretty decent. You know, I don't want to hype myself up, but I was pretty decent. Um, but, yeah, so I, I love the game of football. I love training people. I love just seeing people progress underdog, like I was saying. But, yeah, man, so I played a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I and I, I like to say, too, I played in high school. I was basically mm-hmm. the Josh Allen of Lewis in high school football. I came off the bench. You know, I was a rotational DN. Got six uh-huh. sacks. Second in okay. the team. Only play, only played like thirty snaps a game. Went in there, did my thing, you know. I was yeah, more, that's I was more of against the run kind of thing because, like, I'd, I'd stretch him out, you know. I was, I was, a, mm-hmm. was a run defender, but you talked about um, training people, and that's kind of you know your niche now. That's what you do. Um, kind of, how did you get into that? Did you know, like, going out of high school, that that was a career path you wanted to go uh, for the college route, or did it just kind of mm-hmm. come up to you? So no, nah, well. Um, I knew I wasn't going like I really wanted to play football or run track and um it just really wasn't working out as far as the injuries go. So I um started interning at this uh physical therapy department in the hospital where I'm from in Jacksonville. And um they were just tell like I was learning a lot about it and stuff like that and I was really intrigued by it. So when I went to Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida, I majored in physical therapy. And if people don't know, physical therapy and occupational therapy is two different things. It's physical therapy is from the waist down and um, occupational therapy is from the waist up. So um, with that being said, um, I was doing physical therapy and I started training during sophomore, my sophomore year. And I figured I want to really just hone in on training and do that. So what I found out about like the curriculum was occupational therapy had an easier curriculum. So I switched over to occupational therapy because I wanted to be a trainer anyway. Mm-hmm. And so I got my degree in occupational therapy. Um, and I just started training more and started branding myself more. And um yeah, so like my dad was a trainer. My granddad trained me as far as sports go. So it was kind of like a running the family type thing. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm the one that's really taking it further than them, like in the entrepreneur standpoint of it. So yeah, that's how it happened. Dude, I I was gonna say this when we first started. Your name, dude, is the easiest name to market a fitness brand around, oh, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like when I first found out that you, that like what your what your uh you know your brand is or your business is called, I was like, that's a gimme, dude. He probably knew that by the time he was like twelve years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. So that's that's crazy. Like it, it it's it's like fate. I believe in fate a lot, and it's like shoot, name chance, your chance. Yeah, like that's dope. Like it's your chance. It's, it just goes, you know. So yeah, I guess it was just a it was a like a fate, like I say. So we know you're a personal trainer. We know that that's your background. Um, mm-hmm. When you got more into the business world and, you know, entrepreneurship and you're trying to brand yourself, uh, as a guy that wants to be kind of like an influencer or somebody that, you know, can do that myself, um, mm-hmm. what was that journey like? And uh, what are some advice and some tips you can give to people that are going on that adventure? Okay, well... I kind of stumbled upon my followers, like a lot of followers, by mistake. Um, But when I realized, when I started getting more followers, I realized people just love consistency. Oh, God. People genuinely love consistency. So no matter what you do, what you look like, what you, how you sound, anything, they love consistency because there's always a group of people who can relate to you. So the more you post, the more you just just go at whatever you want to do in general, people will gravitate towards that. Because a lot of people, they need somebody to look up to, they need somebody to relate to, and it might not be somebody next door. They might, they might feel alone, but me, me going on your YouTube and seeing that you feel the same way I feel, and you, you feel as passionate about, <clears throat> passionate about the Jaguars as I feel, it's like, dang, 
I'm not the only one that love the Jaguar. <laughs> go on YouTube and and we have the same thoughts and ideas and stuff like that. And I started watching you back in probably 2016, 2017. Didn't say a word. So it's like you never know who's watching. Um, one thing is a lot of people get soaked into the likes on Instagram and stuff. And it's like, bro, like you were telling me when we are off recording or whatever, like people watch your stuff and they can relate to it but they just keep it to themselves, which is fine. So you basically, you just don't, you never know who's, who feels, who, who feels you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just never know. So it's like, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, those 10 views, those 10 likes, or whatever the case may be, those are people who feel you, you know what I'm saying? And the more, the more consistent you are, the more people come to follow you or whatever the case may be. So keep it consistent. Um, just brand yourself, keep your brand consistent. Colors, font, slogans, logo, everything. Um, and keep everybody in the loop. It's just like real life, man. People want your consistency. Um, if you, if you got a girl, you want, she wants you to text her consistency, consistently. Yeah. She wants you to, you know, just be yourself a hundred percent, your genius self a hundred percent of the time. And that's just what everybody wants. So as long as you do that and post on a regular basis, you'll be fine. You'll um, you'll your people will come. That's just what it is. And that and that's some um, you know I didn't know you were gonna go that route, but that's something that I can agree with a hundred percent. Like, um, like you said, we were talking off camera before we uh, started part two of this. We were just talking about how I seen something on his Instagram story that was super motivational to me, and I it got me through a really rough time in my life. And, you know, I didn't tell him that. And, you know, me and Chance, obviously, you know, we, we DM each other every once in a while. We're kind of, we're somewhat close. You know, we talk. But, uh, you know, you never know who's watching. You never know. That's why I think it's wild, like, when I do my streams. Because, like, streams are when, like, most of your viewers come in, like, from posting consistently. I posted that six-day-a-week grind. And I was getting, like, my subscriber count was growing and growing and growing. It took me, like, a year to get to 1,000. You know, and I had some bumps in the road with, you know, health issues, you know, woman issues, won't get into that. And, uh, you know, just people that, that's that's the biggest thing with when you're trying to do something you love is you got to do it consistently. I work in news, mostly social media. And, you know, if you go a day without posting anything, you're going to lose. You're going <laughs> to lose. You're going to lose, bro. You're Every time gonna lose. you're going to lose. Cause like, you know, people that go to where I work for their news in the local area, go there to get news. And if you go a day, even a weekend, bro, this is, it's like, it's a seven a day a week thing. It depends on how much you want it. If you want this life, you have to work to get it. You can't just say, Oh, I want to be an entrepreneur or, Oh, I want to do this. I want to be a YouTuber. You're not going to be able to do that making one video a week. You're just not going to be able to do it yeah. unless you get to the point where you have gone to six days a week. And then you got that 200, 300,000 follower base and you can post like a podcast once a week. And even then, you know, that's people that yeah. are settling. Even then they're going to, they're going to, they're going to leave or they're going to just stop tuning in. Yeah. yeah and there's just, there's just so much truth in that and the consistency of what you do. Like chance, chances stuff is like always the first thing on my Instagram feed. And then you scroll by three pictures and then there's another thing, you know, he's, he's at it. He's working, he's posting. Uh, this is a guy you should follow my Instagram too. We'll, we'll plug that towards the end of the podcast, but he, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's working really hard to, uh, to get to where he needs to be. So, um, when you get new clients, you know, uh, how many of them are people that are already looking to, that are, are okay, I don't want to be like rude or anything, but like that are already like in decent shape. They just want to, you know, get that extra mm for that extra edge. And how many people are kind of coming to you to like change their lifestyle? So I feel like it's, um, mm, I haven't thought about it. Uh, so percentage wise, I'd say, I'd say a good 80% are overweight. Um, keep it is what it is. They're overweight. Um, probably never worked out before. Um, so they're looking for a life change. And I have some people who are overweight, but not just like 
crazy overweight. They're just like probably 20, 30 pounds overweight, whatever. Um, but still, it's still life changing. Um, when they lose that weight, they realize how good they feel. Like people, people look at a diet, and they 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 once they start the diet, they feel like they feel like a withdrawal type of symptom. And it's like, yeah, like people withdraw from drugs. Like it's a negative. Like it's a symptom. Like because you've been. I'm 26, so I've been feeding myself chicken and uh fry stuff all my life 26 years it's 26 years of conditioning so it's like yeah if you start eating fruit and drinking smoothies every day your body's gonna react to it your head might hurt a little bit it's been 26 years you know what i'm saying yeah so you have to adapt to that um but yes yeah, like 80 percent of them i like never worked out before like that and then have like some girls that's fit they want a bigger butt smaller <laughs> waist things like that like like, you know, small little things that they want. Um, so, but everybody has to make the same type of change. Everybody. I don't care if you're 100 pounds overweight or you just want to you just want to um, get stronger or whatever. Everybody has to make the same type of change. Diet and be more active. That's literally it. Diet and get more active. Like, I don't care if it's 30 jumping jacks a day. That's 30 more jumping jacks than you did yesterday. 100%. So it doesn't have to be a huge, drastic change. It just has to, you just have to start moving. That's mm-hmm. just what it is. I think, I think that goes back to consistency as well. Mm-hmm. Like um, at one point uh, when I was having those seizures, you know, I was hitting you up and I was like, dude, you know, I need to figure out like how to get rid of this. And, you know, you sent me a link to your thing. And like mm-hmm. most of it, I, you know, I read it and I was like, I mean, none of this seems like, too difficult you know it just yeah. it's, it seems like things that I can do because obviously you know I I come from a sports background I was a wrestler I was a football player so I mean mm-hmm. I could work out but you know like I started off doing just like little things like I do I'd get up in the morning I'd do 10 push-ups and I do 10 push-ups before I go to bed and you know just like little things 50 sit-ups just doing that and just mm-hmm. by doing that and not eating like fast food like I went from like 230 to like 215 again and like three months like it's just like yeah it's it's that little things and you know people like you that can give that information out i mean i think are mm-hmm. are important and obviously you're starting this uh, new online venture with uh, your business yeah. uh why don't you tell us a little bit about that yeah so i'm um i'm venturing off in this new online uh fitness i used to do face-to-face fitness now it's on um a few things are online so i have a gluten app for the women and whoever else is interested um, with that, that's dropping February 8th. Um, I have a, a, a male regimen called mu- a Military Muscle. That's where the guys want to get bulk, lean, strong, things of that nature. And I have a um, another one, so like a toning uh, regimen. It's called Triple S. It's uh, strength, stamina, and, um, and slimming. So you're going to get strength, you're going to get stamina, you're going to um, slim down. So those three things that's dropping in the month of February. Um, my my website is Your Chance Fitness. Um, Instagram is Your Chance Fit. You guys can come ask me anything you want. I got a lot of followers, but I still check my DMs. All that stuff. I'm not like that. Um, but yeah. So um, that's what I do. Um, that's what I'm venturing in. It's going to be successful. Like I said, trial leads room for failure. So it's going to be successful. You got to manifest what you want, and this is what I want. So this is going to happen for me. Just like your dream is going to happen for you. I appreciate that, man. And before, uh, you know, we peace out in the podcast, um, is there any story you have, like, with, you know, you don't have to say names or anything, you know, with, like, an individual client or somebody that you just seen perform in front of your, or, like, improve in front of your eyes that really kind of made your work feel worth it? Like, that really yeah. sticks out to you. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I have a few. It's yeah. crazy because a lot of – you don't realize what people go through until you start meeting people. And with the business I'm in, a, people, a lot of people confide in you. A lot of people are vulnerable. Like, a lot of people in the gym are very vulnerable. Um, so I have people who cry in front of me who just just break down and say, this is what's going on, you know. Um, so I had a couple people who – I have people who are mute. Um, I have a person who's mute that can't really speak. Um, 
that I communicate with and I train with him. Um, I have a young man that uh, has autism. He's also, he can speak, but not as much. Um, and they're doing great. Um, but the people I have more a bigger relationship with are these two women um, that I train. They just so happen to be vegan. Both of them are vegan. Um, but um, yeah, so they started with me. And I remember, matter of fact, I'm just going to talk about one of them. Um, they started with me when I was in Atlanta. And probably like a, a week or two in, she just broke down. I was like, man, I can't do this. It's too heavy. It was like 15 pound weight. She was trying to do lunges. It's too heavy. This is it's too much. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, um, the next couple months, she dropped 20 pounds. Um, she toned up, got the muscle, and she's she literally hasn't missed a day since. I, I got to Atlanta in June. She hasn't missed a day since since she first booked with me. So it's like it's a, it's a lifestyle. People don't realize it's a lifestyle. It's not what you do, it's who you are. Um, you, you, you're a YouTuber. That's what, that's who you are. You're a broadcast. You, you pop, you, you do social media, basically. That's who you are. You don't look at it as a job. Oh, I gotta do this. Oh, I have to do that. I have to go to the gym. No, it's, this is me. This is what I do. Yes, I'm at the gym. This is what I do. Um, it's not what I have to do. Um, so a lot of people need to look at it as a positive standpoint instead of a negative standpoint, because nobody wants to have to do something. They, you know what I'm saying? They, they would rather, you know, I'd rather do this. They don't want to have to do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. Um, so, yeah, I like guess you got to look at the lifestyle. She started looking at the lifestyle and literally has not missed the day since. And it's crazy. It's, that's, that's crazy to me. Um, but, yeah, so that's – I'm so grateful for her. But, um, yeah, so she – yeah, that's, that's one story I, I love. I'll tell over and over. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that uh, recaps episode three of the Troop Talks with podcast. Chance, you got any words before we uh, peace out of this one? No, nah, man, I just appreciate you um, finding me worthy to be on your podcast, man. <laughs> I've been watching you for three years, and that's crazy to say. But, yeah, it's been about three years, 16, 17, 18, 19, 18 four, about to be four oh, years. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So I appreciate it, man. Um, thank you for giving the platform to speak on what i need to speak on um yeah man i'd love to be on again so yeah thank you all right i appreciate you having on chance make sure if you guys haven't already check all the links down below you can like me on facebook at troop talks follow me on twitter at troop talks follow me on instagram at trey von pixley also go follow my boy chance uh chance why don't you go plug your instagram and everything away because i don't want to get it wrong <laughs> at your chance fit i appreciate it. your chance fit my name is Chance James. If you have any questions, concerns, or anything of that nature, feel free to comment, DM me, whatever the case may be. Um, but yeah, Your Chance Fit. And then my Instagram, I mean, my website is yourchancefitness.com. I have my online regimens on there. Um, so stay tuned, man. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. You guys have a great day. Get that eighth batch, eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gonna end up in that Maybach. Maybach speed racer on that racetrack, racetrack. I'm just trying to get that eighth batch, eighth batch flamethrower. How we blaze tracks, straight facts. We gonna end up in that. Ma